Good afternoon. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It's going to be an awesome day of the Lord. It is today on a limitless life. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to share what God has been giving me to bring to this wall today. And I've got confirmation that has absolutely blown my mind. So, for you all who are going to join in, know that you can watch this broadcast later. I've had other people request that I put this broadcast on my YouTube channel, and I will try to do that as well. Hey, Anna, so good to see you on here. And oh my goodness, what God is going to encourage you with today is going to be absolutely amazing. And so, as we get ready to go into this transition, for you to hear the scripture and all the unpacking of it, for you to live a limitless life, oh my goodness, let us enter into this time with prayer as we get ready for a limitless life. God, we thank you for the power of Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you are bringing us to a greater understanding of your word of truth as you are causing us to see with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the very heart and intention you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, the scripture that God brought today, which was the verse for the day, I am on Bible Gateway every morning. I always get the verse of the day every morning, and I post it on my Facebook wall, wall Robin Kirby Gatto, and God has me put it up there every single day. And what is absolutely amazing is, the thing that He told me yesterday, that I posted about yesterday, of how God has been speaking to me, and what he wants me to bring on this wall today. Hey, Pamela, it's absolutely amazing because yesterday God really began speaking to me. And I'm going to skip over just a little bit. God began speaking to me. And what I've been studying on, what I've been teaching on is mindset. God is really emphasizing this mind. We look at scripture and scripture says, as we think where in our heart, what? So are we. But also, as it relates to our mindset, God is bringing us into a greater understanding because He wants us to prosper. I've done a series of God's Firewall Healing of the Soul that is on Amazon, and it is based on 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I wish that you would prosper in all things in life and in health as what your soul prospers. And that soul is our heart and our mind. This is the battlefield the battlefield is all up here, and there's so many saints that do not realize it of why they're being hindered or why they are hindered in business or what they're doing, what God's called them to, and they find themselves hindered is because of what's going on up here between the ears, right? This is where the battlefield is, and God just keeps emphasizing, and I actually write about it and Rev 22, too, as well, about the emphasis about our mind. And God began to really bring the emphasis about the mind and all that's going on in our mind, especially in this series that I'm doing recently on my personal wall and my personal YouTube channel, which is on thoughts and emotions. And, oh, my goodness, on, on Sunday night, Sunday day, at Birmingham's meeting of God's Fire Wall, Oh my goodness, God really emphasized it. And many of us, hey Mich Michelle, so good to see you on here. Thank you for joining in. So awesome to have you on here, lady. And God has really been emphasizing over and over and over thoughts and emotions. And right now, as I'm getting through my health and wellness certification, I will try to have that book out at the beginning of next year. And it's really going to be about the thoughts and emotions, our thoughts, our mind, and our emotions. And God just emphasized that when we get this right up here and we get it in line with this, our heart, our body, then we'll see victory, then we'll see breakthrough. And a lot of people are hindered in their business and they do not realize that they're not getting to the next level or they're hindered in life. And they do not realize that they're not getting to the next level because there is a need for the heart and mind to connect. Or can we say the body and the mind? I'm not going to get into all of it today, 
but I want to get into a synopsis of it and just give you a little nugget in order to bring you greater understanding because a lot of people are doing life based on up here only and this is where we get in a place where we kind of stray off the beaten path we're not in the call that God's called us to or maybe we're in the business we're in the position we're in the job or maybe we're doing the entrepreneurship that he's called us to but we're kind of off kilter and it's because of the mind heart connect as we think in our heart so are we we also see in Proverbs that we are to guard the heart with all diligence because out of the heart comes what the issues of life and that issues actually represents emotions the emotions of life come out of the heart this is the feeling part of yourself and as we get older we do not realize it that our person is just just used to being on a program we can compare this to a software program that we keep playing over and over it's almost as if you're using your computer and you want to use the same program over and over and over well if you keep using the same program over and over and over what's going to happen you're going to keep getting the same results and that is a good analogy as it relates to our heart and our mind and we're going to see that without realizing it that your subconscious becomes your body what do I mean your body is used to all of these emotions no matter what they are good or bad your body is used to all these emotions that you've experienced ever since you were little that you continually without realizing it by choice you continually choose to experience it over and over and that becomes an addiction which becomes part of your computer software program or can I say part of your day part of your personality your personal reality where you're living in the same day over and over and over without realizing it and what we do not understand is the impact of our thoughts our memories and how when we have those memories that are in our hippocampus in an accordion file without even realizing in our brain that there are some underlying memories that we have that we're pulling on because of certain emotions that it brings to us that we experience without realizing it we've created an emotional addiction where whether good or bad we enjoy those emotions and if that's not enough our body will actually create more receptors in order to get more chemical hormonal messages in order for these experiences and emotions to be amplified is that not crazy and so it reinforces a mindset it reinforces our emotions and so when there is not a connect of us taking authority over our emotions then we can get out of balance hey Colleen thank you for joining in we can get out of balance and we're not walking in a spirit-led life one of the things God keeps emphasizing over and over and over he says Robin I'm changing your mindset and as I change your mindset and this is the Romans 12 1 and 2 transform mind the renewed mind and we're gonna get into that just a little bit today the transform mind the renewed mind everything that we do in the call of Christ Jesus as we are led by Holy Spirit is spirit led now let me just give you this synopsis just so you'll have it as a background into the scriptures today and into what God wants me to bring and confirmation is what he's doing in your life right and so 1st Corinthians 2 is the synopsis of us understand living a spirit led life we see this also expressed in Romans 8 14 those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God and so in 1st Corinthians 2 we see that the spirit led life is born out of wisdom by knowing Christ Jesus and him crucified his sufferings on the cross that we are crucified with Christ right 
And if we are crucified with Christ, then what? We are resurrected with Him, but that's knowing that resurrection power. And so when we're looking at this emphasis of a spirit-led life, this is where God brings us understanding and causes us to know about the mind. And that the indication of what is going on up here is being lived outside of us, whether we realize it or not. Because remember, Scripture says, guard the heart with all diligence, for out of it flows what the issues of life. What is, am what is amazing is, is the word emotion comes from two Latin words, ex mover. And it means ex, out, and mover means move. And so when we look at the word emotion, what we're looking at is really what is moving out of us. Can we say that positive or negative energy? Why am I bringing that up? Because it's power, but God has given us all authority over that power. Jesus says that we have been given all authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and nothing shall. virtue. Virtue is expressed when Jesus was surrounded by all of these people and the woman that had the issue of blood grabbed his garments, the wings of his garments, and Jesus asked, who touched me? And all of his disciples were like, look around you, Jesus. All these people are touching you. All these people around here. here. And he said, no, someone touched me because virtue left me. That word virtue, as it relates to that woman, is actually the Greek word exousia, and it means power, it means force. And so what we're looking at today is that within your person, because you are in Christ Jesus, because this wall, a limitless life, is for a faith-based adventure in God into the call that He's bringing us into, and to changing that mindset that we have with the renewed mind of Christ Jesus in us in order that we overcome our trials and tribulations because understand this, saints of God, a lot of people are not moving into the call because of what's based between their ears. It's hindering them. And what's happened, as I've described those emotions, is that our body has taken over and our body is trying to make us bring our thoughts under submission to our body or can I say our emotions are trying to control our mind where we've lost our free will and this is where we have to take our free will back and let me just give you an example because a lot of people are not prospering in life they're not prospering in business because they are allow their emotions that are moving out of them to overwhelm them and overtake their mind if they're negative. So let's look at this in that regard. Let me just give you an example. You don't have to answer, but just take this upon yourself. Ask yourself this question. Are there some days that you have been maybe outside or maybe just doing your business, and let's say it's been raining for about a week, and it's cloudy, the sun hasn't been shining, and for some reason you just find yourself in an mood that is depressed or not happy or something sad and you cannot put your finger on it. Well, let me tell you why you feel that way. It is because your body has told you that if the sun doesn't shine for a certain amount of time, then you're sad. And then all of a sudden, you start thinking thoughts that your body is putting a demand on your mind to support these chemical reactions, right, Anna? Right, Colleen? These chemical reactions that say, 
I must be sad. And I don't know why I'm sad, but you must be sad. And then your, your emotions continually tell your thoughts, your brain, what to think. And so this is what is the normal example of our body taking over. And this is why a lot of people are not succeeding in business or in the call because they're emotionally driven. They're not spirit led. Now God has given us emotions. Emotions are good. When they're in the spirit, when Holy Spirit is leading you and your emotions are tempered, your personality is tempered by Holy Spirit. And so you're able to take authority and you're able to tell your emotions, look, you're not going to feel sad just because the sun hasn't been out for a couple days. I'm not going to let these emotions take over. God says, I have the mind of Christ Jesus. God says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. God says, He has anointed my head with all of gladness. That's what it says in Scripture in Hebrews 1. And that's what I'm going to tell you, body, emotions, what you're going to think. And you're going to start having new emotions, new feelings. And I'm not going to allow these negative feelings to stay here because these negative feelings are not benefiting me. They're not profiting me for anything. Because understand this, Scripture is clear. God is a contractual God. He's married to His Word. He performs His Word. 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish that you'd prosper in all things in life, which means in business, in what you're doing, your occupation, and in health. In your body as what your soul prospers or can I say your mind prospers second Corinthians 10 tells us through verses 4 through 8 that we are to take every thought what captive unto the obedience of Christ Jesus and again this is why many are not prospering in life because their emotions their body has hijacked their brain and their body is telling their brain their mind, what they're going to feel. And this is a, an important message, and this is the emphasis that God keeps bringing right now in order for us to overcome. Because understand this, God will never promote you to the next level if He knows that you are not able to handle that level. You're not equipped for that level to maintain that level and to go beyond it. If we get there and it's in our flesh, and it's in our own person, our own doing, we'll get there, but we won't be able to maintain it because we are not spirit-led and we're easily tossed to and fro because our emotions are overtaking and overwhelming us. Now, this is where we're going to get understanding because God has been bringing me great breakthrough because I always buy eBay. I always buy secondhand items. This phone that you see only costs $25, and it's not because I have a phone plan. I am on Straight Talk, which I purchase automatically every month, where I pay for my service. And this is a Straight Talk track phone for only $25. It doesn't do much. But needless to say, this phone has limited me in my ability to do ministry and business. It doesn't have enough gigabytes. I need more room. I need more capabilities on there. And where God is taking me and where God is stretching out my tent pegs, enlarging the curtains of my habitation, Isaiah 54, where He is enlarging our territory, I need to be able with my mind to be set free and control my emotions and tell my emotions, tell my body what it's going to think in order to get to the next level where God has us going, right? And so my normal bent as a good steward and also just as a minister who's li lived a very lean life financially, I've always bought generally second-hand, pre-owned, used, whatever, clothing, phones, you name it, shoes, whatever. I've always used, done that because that is just what I have thought as being a good steward in those years. For nine years being a minister in full-time ministry for nine years. So God is taking us to a new season and to a new mindset. God's enlarging the curtains of our habitation. And we're leaving the lean season. And we're going to a season where He's prospering us 
because he's done work in our souls over these nine years of being lean and God is changing our mindset and he's getting us ready for the harvest or can I say jubilee season and it requires a transition in mindset because my old season my wilderness season my lean season would say Robin get another phone get a used phone get another phone that's uh, a track phone get the cheapest phone but that's not what God told me and it's almost like what I've shared before is I feel like I'm God's Barbie doll and when I used to play with Barbie dolls when I was a little girl I would take the Barbie doll and I've got my semi-derm gel I'm sorry but this is what I have to use and I would take the Barbie doll and I would use the Barbie doll and say go in the car go in this place sit in this sit in the car go in the house and I would just take the Barbie doll wherever I wanted to go that is what I described that's been happening for years since I've been in full-time ministry it's like God is saying Robin go to the Philippines Robin go to Nicaragua and he'll take me these places Robin go to South Carolina Robin go to Texas go to Arizona go to Philadelphia go to Virginia go to West Virginia go to Florida go to Mississippi go to Tennessee go to Louisiana and these are all places I've been go to Kentucky and God would take me all these places and I was just like God's Barbie doll. okay God here I am also when I preach when I teach it is the same way I come prepared I study the word I study the word a whole lot I do a lot of Hebrew Greek and I study what God tells me to study but I never know what message he's gonna bring out but I've studied to show myself approved so that when he moves out of my person when that emotion that holy emotion that holy personality of God moves out from within me to give the message I'm just like the only description I can tell you God's Barbie doll and I'm listening and watching myself give a message not understanding what exactly is going on other than I'm spirit led and this is where 1st Corinthians 2 comes because the wisdom from above is being spirit led where God shows us things that are fenced in things that are hidden Holy Spirit combines scripture and lays them out and interprets them Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and us having the Holy Spirit are given that anointing the grace to have the mind of Christ Jesus first Corinthians 2 16 and scripture says first Corinthians 2 verse uh, first Corinthians 2 verses 13 through 16 shows us the Word of God is spiritually discerned it's folly to the natural mind and again it's being spiritually led and I get into the analogy as I share in another book of God's Bible hand of the soul session to the wind on Amazon where I share all the scriptures and show you that our spirit man and Holy Spirit are in our belly that is also the place of the second largest location of neurons in your body the first place is your brain the second place is your belly and that is what we call a gut feeling why because Holy Spirit with your spirit is in that area of your belly and so that dimension of your soul your soul is located in the head in the mind and the heart but also that area of your belly that has the second largest place of neurons your soul is in that in that area and I use scripture and I show that and I lay that out it's all scripturally based but God has given me a logical mind he's given me the grace to teach it by the grace of understanding knowledge and wisdom so you can understand it so that when you get that gut feeling that gut instinct that is you hearing Holy Spirit Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit man and you don't know why yet you just have this feeling or this instinct but it's from your belly it's not just all over your entire body where you've been emotionally driven on a software program that's playing over and over and over again but this is an area of the still small voice where you have something just tugging at your soul and you have this gut feeling you can't put words to it yet and that is an indicator you can't put words to it yet but later on as you press into God he gives you knowledge wisdom and understanding 
and he brings this gut instinct from your belly to your heart to where you start feeling confirmation. You don't know exactly why, but you feel a witness. So your heart witnesses to this belly area of this gut instinct. And then all of a sudden, God brings it to your mind. And it's like, what? Wow. That's confirmation of what you're hearing from the still small voice of God. And so God has been showing me, especially in this season, he said, Robin, I have to change your mindset because your mindset is used to the old season. The season where you've been a good steward, I'm still a good steward. I learned stewardship in that season. I'm still a good steward. But my brain has been that let's get everything used. Let's get everything secondhand pre-owned. Let's not get anything super nice. Let's do whatever we can to conserve money. And as a result, where he's taking me into this season requires that change of mindset, first and foremost, for me to be the leader that he's called me to be, for me to be able to bring a grace to the body of Christ Jesus, where he brings this understanding, he brings this message. Because understand this, I did not intend on doing a limitless life wall. I did not intend on it. It was not my choice. It's not like I said, okay, I want to do a limitless life wall. Let me decide on it. No, God said, Robin, do a limitless life wall. And I was like, okay, yes, sir. And I'm finding myself typing and I'm finding myself doing this limitless life wall. And I'm finding myself putting up these messages and these videos. And that's the only description I can tell you is it's like God just overtakes me. And this is the spirit led life where I've already got a witness in my heart with my gut instinct. I can't tell you exactly everything why. I just know I'm led and I have to do it. And so yesterday, God had been bringing, as we have been able in this new season to get a little bit more money, God has been breaking off chains off of my mind, giving me a new mindset. And he said, Robin, I want you to get a new phone and I need you to get a phone that's going to have enough gigabytes on it that you're going to be able to do your ministry at a greater level because I'm stretching your tent pegs. You're going to have to do more videos and you're going to be do them, doing them around live at different locations in the United States. And you're also doing health and wellness coaching. And I need you to be able to be the best health, best health and wellness coaching to the clients that I'm going to bring you and be able to provide them to such an excellent delivery and service and being able for them to have access to you. And I need you to have this mindset of going to the next level. And I was like, okay, God. And he said, Robin, I want you to get this phone. I'm like, God, I do not want to get that phone because, uh, you know, I have issue get that phone and I'm going to do this, this, and this before I get the phone. And God had already having me saving money up little by little by little each month, not knowing that he was going to have me use some of that money for getting the specific phone that is going to absolutely bless us. And understand, it's not that expensive to most people, but to me, from where I've come from, from the old season, it is expensive to me, okay? But God is changing that. He's giving me a new mindset. And I find my, I found myself just going in, getting this phone, and just getting it and holding it, and Matthew being able to help me with it. And I'm like, is this is so crazy. This is so crazy. Why am I getting this phone? Just like when I got in a multi-level marketing business recently in the last three and a half months that I promised myself I would never do again because I've been in many multi-level marketings. Again, never say never. And I told myself I'd never do it. I'm in it. And I find myself doing leadership and my heart and my desire is to make people the best version of themselves. That God has given me a platform for me to encourage, for me to coach, for me to edify, for me to just exhort you to be the best version of you. To have the transformed mind. To be able to know that God has got unlimited blessings for you. For, for you that you have to have a limitless thought ability by God's grace. Hallelujah. It's the renewed mind. Romans 1. Romans 12, 1 and 2, and to be able to walk in that grace. And God has been totally giving me this new mindset, moving me away from the old season, 
And I was just like, yesterday, he was talking to me. He said, Robin, I want you to understand what you're doing right now. Even though you can't understand everything, I'm leading you in the way where I'm going to profit you. And I'm like, woo! Whatever that looks like, God, I have no clue what it looks like. Now, understand, I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel. I have lived a lean season. I believe in your se in seasons. God has seasons. God creates faith, right? What I am talking about is the call. Do not confuse this, misinterpret it, or think that I'm trying to tell you you need to be rich. That is absolutely not what I'm telling you. What I am telling you is about a new mindset. And when God brings you out of a lean season and He brings you into a prosperity season, and if you don't perceive it and that it's springing forth, and if you don't go with it and get the transformed mind that's necessary for you to be able to walk into it and to maintain it, then you're going to miss it. And you're going to totally miss the blessings that He has in store for you. Many are called, few are chosen, few are willing to get the mindset that is necessary, period, to walk in every season of the call, in the lean season, in the prosperity season, in the harvest season, in the planting season, in the plowing season, and they're not willing to do the work, and they're just lazy, and they would ri rather have God just bring everything on a silver platter to them, and they're not willing to put in the hours and the work necessary for the transformed mind, which first and foremost always comes from the Word of God. Understand this as well. It takes an open mindset by Holy Spirit to bring you freedom to have the transformed mind to realize that God is speaking in front of you all through the day through different avenues if we would but hear Him. And so He has many teachings. He has many incredibly anointed people out there, men and women, that have been tested, been tried, that are a resource outside of the church, that are what we would know as motivational speakers, and they have been tested and tried by God, and He has prospered them and blessed them, and they have this transformed mindset where they came out of the lean season, and they walked into the season of prosperity. Because again, 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish that you prosper above all things, in life and in health, as your soul prospers. So I've already gone over that, and I don't want to get into that again, but this is where God is bringing us uh, anointing and grace. Because yesterday God told me, He said, Robin, you can't comprehend why you're doing everything right now. But let me tell you this. I'm transforming your mind. I'm giving you a greater mindset than you've ever had in your life. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I've already got a massive mindset from all the 80 workbooks I've written that I've transposed some of those workbooks into books on Amazon. And I'm thinking, the revelations you've given me with physics, science, mathematics, anatomy, astronomy, physiology, bo uh, botany, all of these sciences, and I'm th and thinking, and I'm going to have even more of a transformed mind. God, I don't know if I can handle this. It is so amazing. It's just so much glory. And God said, Robin, I'm about to blow your mind. I'm about to change your mind because I'm going to show you how your emotions have been attached to your mind and been consuming your thoughts. And that is what I expressed earlier about how we do not realize that our emotions have hijacked our mind. And that is why the Word of God says, take every thought captive, right? And God is going to bring you a scripture. And this is what absolutely blew me away because I preached this the other night in Birmingham's meeting of God's firewall. And God brought the dynamic of the mind and body connection. And don't think I'm doing New Age because I'm going to show you scripture. And I'm not doing New Age. Satan hijacks things. He's a counterfeit, but God is going to bring you scripture and he's going to show you exactly what's going on. And I've been talking about thoughts and emotions the last three to four weeks. It's up on my YouTube channel, having God lead me into doing a series on thoughts and emotions. And it wasn't until Sunday night 
when God had me teach out of Romans 12, 1 and 2, and he's already had me doing all these things that I've told you, and then boom, he brings in Romans 12, 1 and 2 in a way that I've never seen it before. And again, before we get to Romans, uh, after we do Romans 12, 1 and 2, we're going to get into the scripture, the verse that was the verse for the day on Bible Gateway. It blew my mind because it was exactly what God told me yesterday that I posted on a limitless life. I cannot wait to share with you what God is telling me. And he's telling me it's a time for you to prosper in life and in health as your soul has prospered. He has to keep his word, right? So let's look actually at Romans 12, 1 and 2. And this is absolutely going to bless you as God brings this connection. Again, I'm going to have this in greater detail in a book that will be out. Hopefully, I'm hoping, I'm praying it will be out hopefully by the beginning of the year. And it will be Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ Jesus. And it's based on the Table It series where I do my health and wellness coaching. Amen, Anna. And so let's look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. This is absolutely going to blow your mind. You're never going to see it the same. When God is bringing us understanding, because I've seen this scripture a gazillion times. I understand the transformed mind to a level, but you're going to understand it a level that you have never comprehended it before. And it is absolutely going to blow you away. Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. Can you hear this pleading? I plead with you. I beg you. Listen to me. That's what the apostle is saying. To make, here it is, a decisive, look at this, dedication of your bodies. This, this, he's referring to the temple. He's referring to your emotions. Make a dedication. Dedicate your emotions. Dedicate your body. Don't let the enemy hijack your emotions and hijack your brain with it. You dedicate your body and your mind will rise up and be in that position of taking every thought captive because you won't be in an emotional roller coaster if you have a bad day in the office, if you have a bad day at home. That emotion of that bad day won't own you. And in fact, you'll cut it off. It's almost like a serpent. You'll cut the head of the serpent off and it won't speak to your emotions and you'll tell yourself you're having a good day. You have the mind of Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He has a plan to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. This is what we're looking at with Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's look at this one more time before we do the verse for the day and then I'm going to end. Romans 12, 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members as a living sacrifice, holy, as a holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God. Guard your heart. Take control of your emotions. Uh, do you hear this saying to God? This is the message Make a decisive dedication of your body. Guard your heart. Control your emotions. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Guard your heart. Control your emotions. As a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. And here's verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, this age. Don't be emotionally driven fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, emotionally driven. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals, its new attitudes. I love the Amplified Classic. So that you may prove for yourselves. So in other words, that you may walk in the will of God. What is the good, acceptable, and perfect? Here it is will of God. The will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. This is where we have to get understanding. 
What are you listening to? What voice? What message are you listening to? Is it negative? If your environment is negative, if you have the enemy coming in like a flood, Scripture says in Isaiah 59, 10, he raises a standard, God does, to send the enemy fleeing in seven directions. That's the word in you. That's God's message. That's the transform mind. That's when you take your thoughts captive and you tell your emotions, I'm not a loser today. I'm a winner. I'm going to serve the people that God brings in front of me. I pray every day for the business that God has me doing on the side that's been able to bring us some income where we have food to eat and we're able to go out once a month to eat. And we spend like $40 to go out once a month to eat. Now, that might not be a lot to some people. That's a lot to me because we never go out to eat. We haven't really gone out to eat. We've always just been able to go out to eat only when other people pay for it because for years we've been in a lean season. But God has now brought a little bit of more money in where I'm a we're able to go out to eat as a family. And I don't have to say, oh, we can't go out to eat. I'm able to say we're in a new season and I know that God's blessing us. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to enjoy this meal with my family. I'm going to sit with my family, eat this meal. It costs about $35. We're going to have an awesome time. I'm not going to stress out about it like I normally would in the old season. Because God is prospering us. And we're able to enjoy this meal. And guess what, Satan? I'm not going to let you rob me of my joy to eat this meal. And tell me, oh, you, you know, watch your money. Do this. That's the old season where I've lived in the lean season. I've been a good steward. I'm still a good steward. But God has brought just a little bit more money in this season for us to be able to go out to eat. And I'm telling my emotions that are used to the lean season, look, lean season's not here. I can go out to eat and I'm going to enjoy it. And all these emotions that's trying to make me feel guilty are trying to steal my joy from being able to eat this meal. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to come under the blood and you're going to be happy and you're going to enjoy this meal, Robin. And all of those emotional receptors that are used to that chemical feeling of telling me, oh, you need to feel guilty. Oh, you shouldn't do this. All of that is getting taken control of. And those emotions are not hijacking my mind because I am spirit led. I am led by God and he is profiting me. And he is telling me which way to go. This leads to our scripture today. And this is what blew my mind. Because again, as I gave you that Barbie doll analogy, where I feel like God is saying, go do this, do this, do this, do this. You need to get this. You need to do that. And it's like I find myself going, okay, I'm God's Barbie doll. And he's just telling me what to do and when to do it. And I don't understand it. And God said yesterday, as I got ready to, as I posted yesterday on the Limitless Life, he said, Robin... You're doing all of this because I'm leading you by the Spirit. And I'm preparing you for your next level of blessing. Your next level of abundance. And how you're going to have such a transformed mind. And you're going to be able to lead others in this transformed mind. In a new mindset. In the mind of Christ Jesus. And I was like, woo! Glory to God. And God said, Robin, post it on a limitless life. And lo and behold, today's Bible verse, when I wake up this morning, confirmation, the Bible verse of the day. Are you ready? Isaiah 48, 17. Oh my goodness. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. What? Mind blown. Ephesians 3.20. Listen to this one more time. Thus says the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. This blew my mind. And God said, Robin, there it is. That's what I was speaking to you about yesterday. The reason that you're going here and there, you're doing this and that, is because I'm leading you. I'm teaching you to profit. I'm leading you in the way you should go. And I was just like blown away. Now this is awesome because as we get ready to end, let's look at this word profit because you have to have the transformed mind to move to the next level of business God has for you. 
It is not about numbers. It is not about you hitting a quota. Now, can that be a goal? Absolutely, and I encourage that. I encourage you to do that. If you're making a list of people that you are drawn to contact by Holy Spirit, if God leads you whatever way you should go, if you set goals, you need to have goals. It's practical to have goals. You need to have a vision of where you're going, right? We do. We know where we're going. We don't know all the steps that we're necessarily going to take in between now and then to get there. But we know what God's laid on our heart for us to be a blessing to our family at large, to my parents, to our children, to have a retirement because I don't have a retirement. For us to be able to bless people in the kingdom of God who are less fortunate. This is what God is doing with us in this hour. And God is bringing us a greater mindset to understand to go in that way of profit that he's leading us in this hour. And this is what's absolutely amazing because we're going to really focus on thoughts and emotions on a limitless life, on a mindset. This is going to be what I bring to you continually as God leads me. And I'm going to emphasize by Holy Spirit. And you get with the people, you get with the company, you get with your boss, you get with your mentor in business, you get with your spiritual mentor, you get with your coach that God has you getting with. And I do health and wellness coaching. Part of health and wellness coaching is relationships, it's physical, it's also occupational. And so I do that also with other people that I'm actually coaching right now. And I'm getting ready to hopefully in two months get out of health and wellness school certification and be able to do it in a larger scale. But right now I have some clients and I'm able to do that with and be able to help in the meantime as I'm getting my certification and I'm growing more and I'm doing basically what I've done all along. I'm just doing it on a more focused scale. So as you have goals, you should have them written down. But this is the thing. As it's in front of you and your eyes are on it, even though that is your goal, you have to understand the main focus is the process of your character of integrity as you reach that goal. Because if you don't have that as your focus in the transformed, renewed mind of Christ, if that is not your focus and you start worrying about numbers, then before you know it, People are not going to be your focus that you serve. They're just going to be a number. And you don't want that. You want to serve other people. You want to be a servant. You want to be the most excellent person you can be. And this is why a lot of people are not prospering. And they're stuck at a certain level. Because God has to mature you at this level. Before he takes you to the next level. Understand this. I know God is going to bless us. I know it's going to be large. I know it's going to be Ephesians 3.20, but in the meantime, God has me reading all these books. He has me learning all of these things. I've already written about the brain. I've written a book about the brain. In the spirit of knowledge, half of that book, probably about 100 plus pages, are about the anatomy of the brain as well as the stress response. It gets into all these details. I started teaching on the brain in 2012 with God's Fireball Healing of the Soul series as well as God's Fireball School of the Prophets. And I've been teaching on the brain and neural pathways ever since then. God is just bringing it in a greater understanding right now as it relates, especially in this hour, for His people in this season of prosperity, for mindsets. God wants to prosper you and you have to take assessment of what you're letting influence in you. What are your thoughts? What are your emotions? What is going on? And again, if you're interested in this, contact me. I will be happy to coach you, and we can talk about that later. But what God wants to bring to you on this broadcast, assess your emotions. What are you thinking when you're feeling this way? Are you feeling a certain way first, and then does a thought come, and then does it make the emotion worse? If that is the case, which that is probably most likely the case, then guess what? Your emotions have hijacked your free will. And you're not going to walk in that prosperity that God has for you, 3 John 1, 2, to prosper in life and in health as your soul prospers. And so God is giving you this grace. He's giving you knowledge, wisdom, understanding to bring you this awesome teaching so you can get your free will back and take authority 
over your body, dedicate your body, dedicate your emotions to God, and don't let them get out of control, right? So let's look at this Hebrew word for prophet, that God wants to prophet you. Again, the scripture in Isaiah 48, 17 says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to prophet, who leads you in the way you should go. Let's look at this Hebrew word prophet. It is actually the Hebrew word ya'al. If you're down here in the south, in the United States of America, this word really fits in with our personality. It looks like ya'al, y'all. It's ya'al. Y'all all, like y'all all. This word actually means to do good, to profit, profitable. It means set forward. Is that not amazing? Set forward, move you forward, be profit, profitable, and to do good. This is what this word means. Now let's look at these three Hebrew letters as we get ready to end, because from the pre-Canaanite Hebrew, these were actually symbols that look like caveman language. You can look at the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. You can look at the Torah and look up the original writing, and it looks like caveman language, because the original Hebrew Aleph Bet was actually written in symbols, and as it went through Babylon and got modernized, it is what we see in the Hebrew in the present day. But let's look at these three Hebrew letters and let's look at the symbols for them because they form a word picture and it actually gives more emphasis to what this word means. Amen. It's the three Hebrew letters, Yud, Ayin, and Lamed. Yud, Ayin, and Lamed. Yud is the ancient symbol of an arm at work. It means works make deed. Y-O-O-D. Ayin, A-Y-I-N, is the ancient symbol of an eye. It means to see, to know, to experience. And Lamed, L-A-M-E-D, is the ancient symbol of a cattle goat that looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature. And it means tongue. Guess what else it means? Control. Woo! Look at this. Tongue, control, and authority. Tongue, control, and authority. And so when we look at this word picture of Yaal, of prophet, are you ready? This word picture is is the works that you see and experience because of God's control on you through your tongue that prospers you. Is that not amazing? Let's look at this again. The works that you see and experience because God's control is on you through your tongue that you're able to take authority. Because remember, Lamed, L-A-M-E-D actually means tongue, control, and authority. So let's look at that word picture one more time as we end here. It's the works which we see what this word means. The good works. The profitable works. The works that you see and experience. Can we say it's already happening in your belly and you're just living it out. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's directing you, and you don't understand why you're doing all the things you're doing, and you're calling, and you're signing up, and you're doing, like, I can't believe I even signed up for health and wellness school, and I'm already two months in. I just can't, it's hard for me to fathom that, but I'm doing it, and it's just like I'm on automatic drive. I'm on automatic pilot. I'm the Barbie doll again, and God is just doing it. He's doing it, and He's doing it. And I'm able to control my person, my emotions, and take authority over my emotions. And I'm able to take my mind back, my free will, and I'm able to walk in the will of God. Is that not absolutely amazing? Because again, as we end here, Romans 12, 1, 2, verse, let me read verses 1 through 2 as we end one more time. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted 
to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals, its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good, profitable, and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight. And this is where we end. Is that not absolutely amazing? Because you are proving by having the new mindset. And by the way, I'm going to put this up on my YouTube channel, Robin Kirby Gatto. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, get on my Facebook wall, A Limitless Life. And God is going to throw you, propel you forward. He's just going to launch you, accelerate you forward in the will of the Father, in the call of Christ Jesus. And we are going to move into action. And we're going to see a limitless life as we, by grace, take authority and control over our emotions. And we dedicate, we make a decisive decision, dedicate our body to God, our emotions to Him. And we walk in the transformed mind. We take our free will back. And we tell our a body, our emotions, the word of truth and what it is allowed to feel by the power of God's grace and His word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I will talk to you later.